Hi guys, it's Heather and you guys have made it to the third part of the series. Again, we are going to go back to my desktop so I will see you guys in a second here. Welcome back to my video today. I actually recorded this previously and I deleted the footage. That's right. I deleted my footage completely. If you guys haven't seen part two of the video or part one, I'm gonna put the links in the description below. Before we begin as well, I wanted to mention that I do have a 30 day Etsy listing challenge. If you guys wanna check that out, again, go in the links in the description below. I am providing a free calendar for you guys on how to post every single day for 30 days. It's a challenge. When I started my Etsy store, this is a challenge I gave myself. I was working full time while uploading three to five listings every single day. So this is possible. It is a very tough challenge, but the thing is you guys are not gonna grow your store unless you're challenging yourselves and keeping posting, keeping consistent with your Etsy postings. With that being said, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'm posting every Monday and Thursday currently, so please, please definitely do subscribe. That allows me to post more content for you guys. Last thing I wanted to mention is that I do have a POD Friends Facebook group. So if you guys want to apply to that, definitely apply to it down below. This group is created so you guys can ask questions to one another and I am going to be answering questions in that group as well. So if you guys want more of a personal experience with me and if you guys have a lot of questions that, you know, you may need answer day of or in within a few hours. I hope that we can get enough people in the group that everyone is answering each other's questions. I was a part of a few active Facebook groups and Facebook communities when I began. Those really, really helped me. I hope that this group can provide that for you guys. I will be posting new videos in there and again, a lot of free content. So literally, I am just providing a bunch of free content for you guys who are following me because that's what I want to pay back to you all for watching my videos and supporting my new channel. We're gonna get into this video. I'm done promoting and plugging everything I can into the beginning. When you guys first start out on Etsy, I do want to mention real quick is that Etsy does require one listing on your store to be uploaded. So what I did when I first started is I uploaded the mock-up image of my first design and I just listed it as a digital listing so to speak kind of almost like a throwaway listing unfortunately you're going to delete that immediately after you post your first actual item so if you guys followed along in the last video and you posted your item then you're going to delete that first digital item that you uploaded first thing that we want to do is we want to find a mock-up that we are going to place our design on when we're looking into mock-ups it's very very crucial that you find very good and high resolution mockups. You guys are going to see a bunch of bundle discount mockups and as appetizing as these may be, I would highly suggest not purchasing those. I've used those bundles. I've spent probably 10 to $20 on all the different bundle deals that they had. The ones that you get 100 mockups for the price of $5. And to be quite honest, those mockups did not do me anything because I ended up buying the more expensive mock-ups in the long run. What I would suggest is getting a few different mock-ups at the three to five dollar range. Now I know this is a little expensive, especially starting out for your new Etsy store. These mock-ups are really going to help you in the long run. Personally, my favorite mock-up stores is Dolly Mox, Luna Jane Mox, and Moody Mox. I have used almost probably 50% of each of those mock-up stores in my own Etsy listings. And today we're going to use one of Dolly Mox listings to create our mock-up. The easiest way to find mock-ups is going on Etsy and just typing in white t-shirt mock-up. So we're just gonna do a white t-shirt mock-up today. You can do any color of your choice. I would suggest looking at the different mock-ups and the different colors that you can use. Before you start this, definitely create yourself a budget. The nice part about print on demand is you're not putting really any money down besides the listing fees. If you are looking at this as a business model, usually businesses, when they start out, you're using a lot of credit and you're going a lot into debt. A lot of people take out, you know, $20,000 in loans or $10,000 in loans. So when you're looking at this business model, you have to look at it as 
a entrepreneur. So we're looking at this as, okay, we're spending 20 cents for a listing fee, up to a dollar to get our first few listings out there. And when we're looking at mock-ups, I definitely want you guys to look at it as a business opportunity and a business venture. $20 to spend on your first startup store, I would suggest spending that amount because you're going to be investing in your own business. And this is your first investment you're putting into your business and into your new brand that's going to be on Etsy. For me personally, my startup budget was about 15 to $20. And once I started seeing those sales come in, that's when I started upping my budget and I spent about 20 to $50. And now I've spent about 200 to $300 on mockups. And I know that sounds crazy. But once I started seeing those sales generate, it made so much more sense for me as a business owner to reinvest my profit into my business. And I still had take home profit. Right now, I average about $1,000 per week I am making on Etsy. And you guys can make that too. When I make that $1,000 on Etsy, that's my take home amount. That's not including taxes and the money that I reinvest in the business. When I get my paycheck from Etsy, I pay off my credit card first. And then after that, I divide an exact amount on how much I'm paying myself. So 30% is going to taxes right away. That's what I put into my bank account for the taxes that I pay. On top of that, I save about 10 to 20% for my business. So for paying for accountant, for paying for bookkeeping services, for paying for legal expenses, for paying for mock-ups. When you guys are going into this business model, this is a business. This isn't just some quick way to make money. Um, any type of income that you're making, as far as Etsy goes right now, and as far as the US goes, if you live in the US, if you make over $600, you do have to record it on taxes and you have to pay it on taxes. In a future video, I'm gonna go over what you should be doing for taxes. And the simple answer is set aside 30% of your income for taxes. I would suggest opening up a business credit account as soon as you start if you definitely are looking at this as a business model because it is a business model at the end of the day. One of the one things I did want to mention is a lot of new Etsy stores do get shut down for about a week or two. And the reason why this is is because it triggers the Etsy algorithm into thinking that maybe you're spam or maybe you're a robot. And also when you upload listings from a print on demand company that sometimes triggers your store to be just shut down. That's completely normal as a new Etsy business. My store was shut down for about a week or two and I was freaking out for almost two weeks. Then I checked my Etsy account and my store was back up. First steps to do when your Etsy store gets shut down, email Etsy right away. They do have a very slow process, but they will bring your store back up. If you guys have your budget and it's around $20, I want you guys to look into getting some basic colors. So to start out, I'd say white, black, and a different color of your choosing is the best. Personally, my best sellers have always been the white t-shirt and a black t-shirt. As you guys can see, some of the listings I personally have purchased in the past are already on the screen. Today, I am going to be doing this mock-up specifically. So this mock-up is just a basic white tee. And yes, it is a little bit more expensive in price. It's about $4, but this is going to go really well with our design that we are uploading. Once you guys buy your digital mockups, what you guys will do is you will go to purchases and reviews. Usually it takes a few minutes for your card to process the transaction and for the download to be available. So wait a few minutes, hit purchases and reviews, and then you will download the digital file. After we purchase our mockup, we are going to go into creating our mockup itself. So all I did is I went to the uploads button here and I clicked on that mockup. After that, I am just going to increase the size of my digital mockup. So it fits the complete 2000 by 2000 custom size that we said earlier. And then we're just going to center it. So another tool that you guys can do is you guys can just upload the item um, and I will show you guys how that is. So if you're creating a design and we're gonna X out of that, so we can just hit edit photo and we can actually select that mock-up that we want to upload. I like doing the 2000 by 2000 because it's a square size and square orientation that I could just easily transfer onto my Instagram. After we have our mock-up centered, I'm going to upload our design just over that. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reduce the size manually here until it looks accurate to our picture. 
So sometimes I would suggest kind of flipping back and forth between your actual image and your model. We want our items to be as accurate as we can. As you guys can see, again, we centered it at the armpit level. So that makes it so it's just slightly above. I'm going to increase because I am really far away. As you guys can see, this is about where we centered on the t-shirt itself. So one tool that you guys can use that I would suggest utilizing is on your keyboard, you can hit the arrows right and left, and that's how you're going to center your item for small little adjustments. The next part that we want to do is we want to rotate our design just slightly so it fits the picture better. So I'm just going to ro rotate it to the side a little bit here. And I am going to bring it down just a hair. And then that's about what we had. Now the one thing I will say is I'm going to bring this down in size just a tiny bit. So you really need to learn how to eyeball when you're doing mock-ups. We want it to look as realistic as possible for our customers and we also want it to be as accurate as possible. So I'm trying to kind of make this more accurate. Um, but I think this is pretty good. I think I rotated it just a slightly bit too much. but So I think this is pretty good and pretty accurate. I'm going to bring it over just a smidge as well. And then sometimes I like clicking out of the item just to see it in full. Now the last step we're going to do is we're going to click on it and we're going to hit this little button that says transparency. And we're going to take the transparency down. I generally like to keep the transparency at, at 87 or higher, especially if the photo is much lighter. In this case, the photo is super light. So I am taking it to 87, which is about my lowest transparency I will go. Usually on most listings, I keep it around 90 to 93 transparency. So this mock-up looks perfect to me now. All we're gonna do is download it. Uh, we have the 2000 by 2000, which is perfect. We just keep it everything as normal. We want it to be PNG. You can switch it to JPG if you would like as well, but I like to do PNG. Alrighty guys, so now we are in the listing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to delete all of these mock-ups that were generated from Printify. We're going to go into our downloads and we are going to open up our file. It will take a few moments to upload that file into Etsy. I would highly suggest getting some type of color chart for your customers and a sizing chart. You can create your own sizing chart template as well. That's something that I will provide later on on my website. Um, again, links in the description down below. So I'm just gonna show you what I'm talking about here. These are sizing charts that you can use for your store. Again, um, I will make one in the future as well on my website that you guys can just download for free and upload to your site. But these sizing charts are pretty, pretty easy to make yourself. You really don't need to buy one. Uh, you can just make this in Canva or do your own template and then add your logo over it so people can't take it from you. When I'm talking about adding your own logo to your size charts, as you guys can see, there's watermarks all over the size chart that's in a lighter transparency. So that's something that you guys wanna do when you upload your own size charts. Another thing that you guys can get is a color chart. So this is an example of one of the color charts that's offered here. It shows all the colors to your customers and it kind of gives your customers that customization feeling that they're searching for. Especially if you sell items that can be bulk ordered. I've had so many customers reach out to me about bulk orders and once you get that first bulk over order, you will understand the thrill of bulk orders because it's so fun creating custom designs for customers who are willing to buy 20 of your items. So back to our listing, after you guys have that size sizing chart on there and after you guys have that color chart on there, as we're going to our title, this is where we're going to get into SEO title tags, all that good stuff that you guys probably want to know. So I'm doing a quick rundown today. In a future video, I'm going to go over in more detail what type of SEO titles, tags will work for a store. When I'm doing my SEO and title, the one thing that we wanna focus on is keywords. You want to imagine yourself as the customer. What type of customer are we looking for? Is it a friend? Is it a family member? Is it a mom of this teacher? Is it a student of this teacher? Is this going to be a gift for a teacher? Will this be the teacher buying it themselves? So we want to make sure we're hitting all those areas and we want to have keywords that other people are typing in that will essentially generate that organic traffic that we're looking for. I am going to put teacher, 
t-shirt. When we're doing SEO and titles, we want to focus on two main things. The two main things that we're looking for is doing short tail keywords and long tail keywords. So short tail keywords are one to two keywords. Teacher t-shirt is our short tail keyword. And then if we're looking to expand that, we're gonna do long tail keywords. The long tail keywords are three to five keywords in your description. So we are going to utilize both of these methods today. The other thing that I wanna say is a lot of people are confused on if they should use commas, if they should use spaces, if they should use the vertical lines between their titles and SEO. I found it doesn't matter. You can use whatever you'd like. I generally do very long tail keywords and then I add commas for my short tail items. We're gonna start with a short tail, which is just teacher t-shirt. We'll go to a long tail one. So we could do gift for new teacher. We can do teacher future teacher shirt. When we're doing a broad niche like teacher t-shirts, we want to go into more micro niches or narrow niches. So we are going to go into English teacher. We can do Spanish teacher. And as you guys can see, I'm not doing any commas now. I'm just kind of writing. I'll put a comma here just for the sake of it. And then we want to go to elementary, high school, cute teacher, t-shirt. Now we've used all the characters in the title. There's 140 characters to use, so try to use as much as you can. This is just kind of an example of what you guys can write for SEO. One thing that's really cool that you guys can do is you guys could just find and research your own SEO titles. And I wouldn't say copy exactly what someone put as their SEO and titles, but you guys can all, always just use some of what other people have written in their titles. As you guys can see in this, in this one specifically, they put educate shirt, teacher t-shirt, teach shirt, teacher shirt, cute shirt for teachers, teacher gifts, elementary school teacher. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna borrow some ideas from this playbook and I'm just gonna kind of add in some things that I didn't have in my original one. So it's always good to go back and kind of edit what you guys put in to get seen on Etsy. I've noticed um, one of the best practices is doing narrow niche keywords now. I found more success in going into the micro niches or the narrow niches rather than just doing educate t-shirt or teacher t-shirt, cute teacher t-shirt. Some of these just don't really work anymore, especially since the market is getting more saturated. So I would suggest looking into the micro niches such as English teacher, math teacher, science teacher, geometry teacher. Just look into all those different niches that you guys can design for or put in as keywords. Either way, if your product is really great, people will buy it. And if you're marketing to the right groups and the right niches, again, people will buy it. There are ways, I have seen many new stores come up in the Etsy algorithm and in the Etsy search from just doing very broad terms as well. Again, it's just all down to how good is your design, how good is your product, how good is your mockups, titles, tags. You need to have everything working together so you guys can get that first sale. As we're going down the line here, there are some options that you guys can select. For the size, I don't edit the size because only choice is men's, which we don't want to put men's. We want to keep it unisex so women and men can order your items. Primary color we'll do as white. Secondary color I like to do as, since we have the gray, I'll put the gray in. One of the things that Etsy does state is filling out all this area here will actually help your item show up better on the Etsy algorithm. I personally do not fill out these areas anymore. I really don't pay much attention to them. I just upload what I do. And that's only because I have a lot of reviews. I have a lot of people who go to my shop every single day. So I'm not really looking at the small details like this anymore. But if you guys would like to be shown up more, I heard that adding everything in like this is very good. For the occasion for teacher t-shirts, I would put 
back to school or you can also do graduation as the other category for this there's a lot of new teachers who get this as a gift so that's always a good idea as well the one area i do fill out a lot is the sleeve length so i do short sleeve and then neck line will be crew when we do renewal options we want to hit automatic i forgot to mention in this video that every single etsy listing that you post on etsy has a four month lifespan so if you don't hit automatic renewal then your listing will expire in four months you guys can turn on manual if you want it to expire in four months and if you don't want it to expire in four months turn on the automatic relisting fee you also get charged 20 cents every single time an item is sold so that those are two times that you will be charged 20 cents every four months and then 20 cents every single time you hit a sale on etsy when your listing expires a lot of the times you're going to forget to renew it so if it's a really good listing and it becomes a bestseller I would suggest just hitting on the automatic just in case and then if you notice listings just aren't performing well later on i would suggest at the end of every month or beginning of every month just look through your listings whatever's not working out anymore hit to manual or expire the listings for the purpose of this video i'm going to change this back to manual so what's really nice about printify and printful is they fill in the description for you so you don't have to do anything on this basis just keep it as is with the description. If you guys want to add anything, you can definitely do so. That's the fun part of print on demand and having your own t-shirt store. As we go down to tags here, we are just going to fill in tags, kind of just like we did SEO. We want to have broad keywords and we, have, we want to have narrow keywords in our tags. It makes it very easy. You can literally just put everything that you put in your title and SEO in the tags. However, I will show you guys what I personally do. So I usually start with three to four broad terms. So we'll do teacher t-shirt. We'll do educator t-shirt. We'll do graduation gift. We'll do hmm, cute teacher shirt. So one thing that I want to mention is you want to have descriptive words and then you also want to have your product words. So I've seen some people who just put teacher. That really doesn't help you much because if you don't put what the item is, so you could put teacher, but the item you don't have in the description. So just putting teacher, people won't really find your item because people are very specific. They want a t-shirt, they want a sweatshirt, they want a mug. The other thing is I've seen people put mug in the tags for a t-shirt and that's not a good strategy to have because etsy also ranks your listings on how accurate your listing is to what people are searching in the etsy search so if you have a mug in your search and people are searching on etsy and they find a, a t-shirt in the mug area sometimes people will click on it but a lot of the times people know what they want when they're searching they don't want a t-shirt if they're searching for a mug so Sometimes they might be happy to find a very cute t-shirt in the mug area, but most of the times you're gonna do yourself a not good favor in getting yourself lower in the Etsy algorithm because you put a mug in your tag line. So, so now I'm going to go into the narrow niche areas. So I'll do English teacher, Spanish teacher, math teacher, geometry teacher. So one thing I also want to mention is I'm trying to use as many characters in each tag as I can. For example, if I'm doing shirt, T, t-shirt, that's one. This is something that I add into all of my tags as well is shirt, T, t-shirt. The reason why I do this is because people spell t-shirt in so many different ways. So I try to hit every way someone's going to spell the word t-shirt because when people are searching on the Etsy algorithm, I've noticed some of my listings won't show up as a bestseller for certain tags. And that's kind of frustrating because you know your design is very good, but it won't show up because you spelled t-shirt in a different way that the customer isn't searching for. So just a FYI for those of you guys, if you guys wanna hit all different variations of how to spell t-shirt, I would suggest just typing in that as one of your tags as well. One of the other things that you want to always mention is some type of gift. Etsy is a gift giving platform. So if you're not mentioning gift in any of your tags, 
you are doing yourself a disservice because you need to have gift at some point in your tags. So whatever you're selling on there, type in gift. You'll pat yourself on the back later. I will also use new teacher 2022. Since graduation season is coming up soon, I think this is a really good idea to do at least new teacher 2022. Of course, every year though, if you're doing this method, you will want to make sure you're editing your listings every single year to make sure that you're changing it to 2023, 2024. We could put student teacher. So another thing that we can do when we are researching is we can go to the bottom and as you guys can see, these related categories and search areas will actually show what type of tags people are using. So I think I'm going to do elementary school, gift for new teacher, and back to school t-shirt. So as you guys can see, I do not have enough tags left, so I'm just going to do back to school t-shirt. Well, I guess we'll just do shirt. The last detail that we want to edit is our shipping for this item. If you guys are doing custom listings, you can hit this personalization feature on as well. One of the issues that commonly happens when you're uploading from Printify to your Etsy site is the shipping will have an error area or it might have a red highlighted area down here. One of the easiest fixes is Etsy just wants you to fill in everything about your shipping. So of course, what's really nice is Printify already uploaded that the zip code's already in here. Along with that, it already has the shipping service and everything else. Sometimes Etsy requires you to update this and USPS is where most of the Printify shipping carriers ship from. Besides Duplium, if you're using in Canada, Duplium uses DHL Express. However, most of Printify uses USPS first class mail, which is two to six business days. So if we want to do the free shipping option, the easiest way to do that is you go to enter custom shipping options, and then you want to hit enter, I'll enter fixed prices manually. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take that same zip code that our print provider provided on that first shipping area. And then our processing time is three to five business days. During the holiday seasons, definitely change your processing time to five to seven business days. So holiday season, and that's when you want the longer processing time because usually most print provi providers are behind in processing and then your shipping is also potentially delayed as well. So just a FYI for those of you who are looking to sell in the holiday season as well. So shipping service, if you're using Printify with Swift POD or Monster Digital, it's going to be USPS first class, which is two to six business days. If you're using Duplium or other carriers, specifically Duplium is DHL Express. Personally, I only do this for US shipping. I just delete that area in total so this this is essentially how you guys create the free shipping option if you guys want to provide that to your customers watch my last video on my thoughts on shipping and how to get your first Etsy sale if you guys want to learn more that way as well guys that's it that's how you guys created your Etsy listing we're just gonna publish that listing and it will come up with this little sad slash angry face I am going to hit it again and just ignore it and it will publish that listing. I always click publish twice and that always fixes the error that happens between the Printify and Etsy listing integration. At the end of the video, we have our listing up. Everything is good to go on our website. We have the shipping. It shows exactly the estimated arrival for the customer, which is really neat. If you guys made it to the end of this video, definitely hit that subscribe button. I'm making the most profitable niches video next, so definitely subscribe. Comment down below if you guys have any questions during this tutorial. I'm sure there's many things that I have left out, so definitely comment anything that you guys might want to know more about. Again, guys, I have free content on my website. It's Heather X Studio, so definitely Definitely check that out below. I'm posting free content to give to you guys and if you guys want to join that 30 day listing challenge definitely go down below and join it. Anyways guys happy posting new listings and I will see you all in the next video.